Hello, welcome to the Witten History webinar. My name is Lara Corrison and I'm going to talk about how Witten started, what Witteners did and share some past members' memories. Before we start, a bit about me. I was appointed in 2017 as Sago's first archivist. I started with an empty shared drive folder and over the last three years the collection has grown in both digital and physical formats. Some of the items include pennants, badges, meeting minutes, club reports and Sago publications. What is Witten? The word Witten means meeting of the wise. It's an international trip for students, scouts and guides to meet new friends and learn about a new culture. So the first Witten was in 1959 held in Gilwell and was hosted by the Oxford Club. The countries that attended were Austria, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Greece, Holland, Norway and Switzerland. There were a total of 85 students, including five Hungarians who were exiled to the USA. Activities were aimed at sharing skills, learning about culture and understanding how they can work together, especially after a devastating Second World War. The camp was made up of 10 students per patrol, with a mix of nationalities and genders. The activities included pioneering, from construction to competition, a guided tour of Gilwell, service work on site, sightseeing and cultural trips to London like the theatre and musicals, wide games, hikes, treasure hunts, country dancing like Cayley and Scottish country dancing. Scout Zone on Sunday was also included from visitors the mayor and mayoress of Chingford. We're now going to look at some past members' memories. So starting with Richard Harper, Richard went to the Oxford University Scout and Guide Club between 1963 and 1965. He says, I was one of a party from Oxford who travelled by minibus to the Norwegian Witten of 1963. The camp was held by a lake. This was a proper scout camp with patrol sites where we cooked our meals. My main memory of the camp is that we had one beautiful day of sunshine, but for the rest of the time it was overcast or raining. Apart from campfires, there was a simple Norwegian country dancing, also out of doors, and it was not easy keeping off on your feet on the slopey and increasing muddy field. There was an indoor event, a Viking feast, where we ate fenlar, a mutton preserved with salt and flatbread, washed down with a beer drunk from cow's horns. I still have mine. Typical of Norwegian scout camps is the overnight hike. Map reading was no problem because we simply walked around the lake. As there was forest most of the way, the idea was that we would not take tents but make bivouacs. Given the inclement weather, some patrols cheated and went around on the first day, but we had taken the precaution of taking with us a large plastic tablecloth that was part of the patrol equipment and with that placed among branches cut from trees. We kept dry. I remember one English girl saying, my mother would have kittens if she saw me now. Whether this was on account of the bivouac or the fact that she was sleeping in mixed company, I do not know. We're now going to look at a 1965 report, which was from the Kudu magazine. So the report says, the theme of the camp was a united Europe. There were numerous lectures given in both English and German by generally well-informed speakers. These meetings with varying degrees of success in their attempts to capture the attention of sunbathing witteners. The talks and discussions in Berlin, however, were much more impressive and successful. The reason for this clearly being that once the Berlin Wall had been seen, the preoccupation of the Germans with the possibility of achieving a united Germany as a first step towards united Europe became readily understandable. Perhaps if the Berlin trip had been taking place prior to the discussions at the Witten, the greater degree of enthusiasm and participation might have been evident. We're now going to have a look at another past member's recollection. This is Tony Crackett. He went to the Oxford Scout and Guide Club between 1966 and 1970. He says, We were asked to bring national costumes, which for the UK doesn't really exist, so the Oxford contingent turned up with full academic dress. So as you can see from the photo, everyone is all dressed up and it looks like someone has brought with them a graduation gown because on their shoulders they've got that rabbit fur fluffiness. And the person sitting on the floor looks like they're wearing a traditional milkmaid's outfit. Um, I think they put a really good effort into their costume. So the next section, we're going to look at the Gaddafi dark plate. 
Sego doesn't have a lot of physical memorabilia, not nearly as much as you might find in a scout or guide troop. The commemorative plate was presented by the Scouts of Libya to representatives of Sego at the Witten in the summer of 1984, held in Florence, Italy. It commemorates the African Scout Jamboree held in Libya 1982 and has been presented to Sego as a mark of friendship. Rather than gathering dust at BP House, it is to be used as a challenge trophy between clubs affiliated to Sego. The enclosed roles will govern these challenges. This is what we're told from the book that the Bath Club wrote out on their long drive back to the UK. The plate was called Gaddafi Duck Plate because it sounds like the Disney character Daffy Duck and to deter away from the Libyan politician. At this moment of recording, we don't know what the inscription says, but maybe one day we'll find out. A box was made for the plate in 2008 by a Scottish club and the plate was wrapped in a blanket to protect it, but eventually this didn't work and the plate broke into three pieces. It did get fixed, but you can still see the lines. In 2017, the then quartermaster decided that the plate deserved a purpose-built case to help it be transported around the country. Through a dev fund bid, a flight case was purchased and to this day is still kept in there. In the case, there is the plate and the challenges book. The photo on the right shows the participants who went to the Witten and received a trophy. The last thing we're gonna look at is the future. So since the first Witten in 1959, there have been a Witten every two years hosted by a different country. But by the 1990s, Wittens were starting to struggle due to a variety of reasons, funds, logistics, maintaining communication with foreign contacts, and other countries ran their clubs in a different way to Sago. None had a uniformed organisation called Sago. They were clubs that were individualistic. There was also a dwindling interest to attend and there needed to be a lot more commitment from the organisers. So the last old style Witten was 1998. And that was the last patrol base, serviced, focus style camp. I don't know if a new host was nominated after this camp. So it's not until 2012 that Witten is properly started up again. It's a new style Witten. The focus is more revive Witten um, with attempts to investigate into the Witten accounts. There were money in a Switzerland account and there's talk about to get them out or what happened to them. No one really knows. Eventually the camp didn't go ahead on exploration, culture experience and travelling. It was decided that Witten should be organised every four years, especially to avoid colliding with other events like Eurojam and the World Scout Jamboree. This 2012 Witten was at KISK and the UK were the only to go. They didn't invite other international contingents. And I don't know if that's because they didn't try or because it was a new Witten, it was just they wanted to focus on the UK contingent. So since the appointment of an international officer in 2017, Sego has managed to rekindle its links with other clubs abroad, like the Irish Rovers, the Dutch Scouts. And from there, Sego has invited these international clubs to Sego rallies, and they have invited us to their international events. And that relationship is starting to be ignited again. Witten is going back to KISK in 2021. From what I understand, the international officer is speaking to clubs from around the world to join us there. So on the screen, we've got at the top is the pennant from the first Witten. And pennants were made as a memento from the camp, a bit like how we have our badges. And they had them at all the intervarsity camps and intercollegiate camps. And they kind of stopped by the 80s. They went really around and it kind of fizzled out. And at the bottom are t-shirts from the 1982 and the 1988 camps. They were obviously themed and they're quite interesting t-shirts, just a bit of fun. So thanks for watching and listening. I hope it was interesting. And this is just scratching the surface of Sego's history. We're now gonna go to in Q&A, but if you know someone who would be interested to watch, this is gonna go on YouTube soon.